In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to all who have come here to the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament on, for this celebration today. You have come from near and far to be together in this Catholic faith community here in the Diocese of Birmingham. Again, I give a warm welcome to all, especially those who may be following us on EWTN and live stream services. Hermanos y hermanas, bienvenidos a todos los que han venido aquí a Santuario del Santísimo Sacramento para esta celebración de la familia de hoy. Ustedes han venido de cerca de Leos para estar juntos en esta comunidad de fe católica aquí en la diócesis de Birmingham. Una vez más, doy una cálida bienvenida a todos especialmente a aquellos que pueden estar siguiéndonos en EWTN y servicios de transmisión en vivo. Un día tan hermoso hoy. Let us take a moment to call to mind our failings and sins and acknowledge the embrace of God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul and all the saints assist you with their merits and prayers. And may the Almighty and Merciful Lord forgive you and free you from all your sins. May he help you persevere in fruitful penance, good example and sincere charity, and lead you to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who are rich in mercy and who will that St. John Paul II should preside as Pope over your universal church, grant, we pray, that instructed by his teaching, we may open our hearts to the saving grace of Christ, the sole redeemer of mankind, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías. Qué hermoso es ver correr sobre los montes al mensajero que anuncia la paz, el mensajero que trae la buena nueva, que progona la salvación, que dice a Sion, tu Dios es rey. Escucha, tus centinelas alzan la voz y todos a una gritan, aborazados, porque ven con sus propios ojos al Señor, que retorna a Sion, prorrumpan en gritos de alegría, ruinas de Jerusalén, porque el Señor rescata a su pueblo, consuela a Jerusalén, descubre el Señor su santo brazo, a la vista de todas las naciones, verá la tierra entera, la salvación que viene de nuestro Dios. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, hermanas hermanos, welcome to the Family Fall Festival of the Diocese of Birmingham, once again here at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament. This is our out of the way place to be together around Jesus. Celebration of Mass this morning is followed by activities and games, food and exhibits, which help knit us together as a diocesan family. And thanks to all, there are too many to name individually, including the benefactors of this event, who have helped make this day possible. I thank you for this blessed opportunity to be together. We've come from parishes and institutions from near and far to be united together in faith as we meet up with familiar faces from parishes and from past events together. Today we also meet new friends who share our faith and values. Together we proclaim one faith, one baptism, one hope, one Lord. And we are united, one family, on a journey toward a common destiny to be one with Jesus for eternity. I convey special greetings to all of you from, and prayers from Bishop Baker as well. Also thank the sisters here, the poor Claire's who are praying for us and participating as well in the cloister. In particular way I express my gratitude to the priests, the deacons, the women and men religious of various charisms who join us today for the Knights of Columbus and for our seminarians who've come back home for the weekend to be with us. What a blessing it is to have all of you back. My friends, our Eucharistic revival is underway. And this revival is centered on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the center of all history and is our goal. It is he who offered himself for us and for our salvation. He redeemed us from our sins and helps us live as free people, not free to do whatever we want, but free to do what we must to be fully God's dream alive today. 
Our readings help us focus our minds on the gift of faith. From the Old Testament book of Isaiah, we read, how beautiful the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful the feet. Imagine where our feet take us in the course of a day. They brought us here today. And yet we are told that those which bear the vessel that brings good news are beautiful. Beautiful like nothing else. With Jesus, the good news, we have healing. We have hope. We have joy. We have forgiveness. We have a glimpse of God himself speaking and acting in our midst. The trumpets sound, the fanfare announces, the voices are raised, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us welcome him among us. The Eucharistic revival already is sounding the notes that awaken us to see and hear the sentinel who bears the good news that we have been waiting to hear. And with that, our task is to carry this good news to the ends of the earth. Our gospel shares the intimate story of Jesus after his resurrection when he meets up with the apostles on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. They had been in the boat fishing all night and as usual, have caught nothing. But they spotted someone on the shore who asked, children, have you caught anything? Then he was recognized. It wasn't just anybody. The timber of that voice, the silhouette that was cast, the gestures, it all fit. It was the surprise of the moment that they hadn't expected. It was so familiar that they couldn't conclude anything else. It was the Lord, Jesus himself. Peter jumps into the water and swims to the shore to beat the boat. Imagine their surprise, their joy. He was there. A fire was cooking with a roasted fish on it already. Who knows where Jesus got the fish from or how the fire got started. Still, still they were so happy to see each other again. It was an amazing reunion after what they had just experienced with our Lord's crucifixion, death, and burial. Yet he was alive right in front of them. Then at a certain point, Jesus turns to Simon Peter. Remember, he had just betrayed him the night of the crucifixion. I don't even know the man. Yet Jesus asks him a very personal, intimate question. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Peter responds. And Jesus asks him three times. And with each answer, Jesus indicates more intensely, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. During the Eucharistic revival, that is the question asked of each of us from our Lord. Even with all our denials and betrayals and sins, Jesus is whispering this question in our ears. Do you love me? At times, he's shouting it from the mountaintop. He is showing you his love through the love of your marriage or the magnificence of a sunset or a beautiful autumn morning or the providential coincidence of events and gestures. Do you love me? And how will you respond? We could say like Judas and Peter, I don't even know him. Or afterwards like Peter, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Why do you keep asking me the same question over and over, Lord? But those in love, need to hear the answer again and again. It's not like a husband who says to his wife, why do you keep asking me if you love me? If I love you, I told you on the day we were married, I love you. Isn't that enough? But there's something inside of us that says we need to hear the answer over and over again. Yes, Lord, I hear you. You know I love you. Our presence here today 
In this Eucharist is Jesus asking us, do you love me? We come forward again at communion, our union with him to say, amen. Yes, Lord, I love you. Then through your words, your life, your gestures, we hear, feed my lambs. Share this gift. Don't keep it to yourself. Be a witness for me. Share it with those who are hurting, with those in need, with those who are wounded and broken. This Christian Catholic community is a community that hears God's word and loves Jesus Christ and shares it far and wide. It must be our DNA. It is what we do as we teach in our schools, as we accompany those who are broken and wounded in Catholic social services and centers for concern. It is what we do in youth group, what we do in our Catholic hospitals and care facilities. It is what we do distributing food downtown to the homeless and hungry. And what we do is immense and has great impact. I can't imagine what would happen if it were all to go away. Truth be told, we did it well before any government program thought about it. It is because we know we are loved and want to share that love with others to accompany them to a life of joy, freedom, and wholeness. My dear friends, stay close to Jesus. Tell him you love him when he asks you. Do not be afraid to receive the good news from the beautiful feet that bring that good news to you. In Jesus, we have a unique treasure that nothing can buy. We have this Catholic faith community here in central and northern Alabama. We are a people of one faith, one baptism, one hope, one Lord, and we are one holy Catholic and apostolic. We are people on mission for Christ. Finally, on this memorial of St. John Paul II today, we recall his passion for young people, for the Eucharist, and for our Blessed Mother. His motto, totus tuus, all yours, is a fitting response to the question of Jesus to Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. I am all yours to do with what you will. Throughout the festivities of today, may we grow in our faith to witness who we are as Catholics, people who love Jesus and the church, the body of Christ, people who are on a journey together to eternal life. And through the prayers of the divine child, Divino Nino, here before us, and Mary, our blessed mother, who loved her son above all and continues to point him out, and St. John Paul II, who committed his entire life to Christ and his mother, may we draw close to the one who gives us life in abundance too. Yes, Lord, you know I love you. May God bless you all. The risen Christ is present in the midst of this holy assembly. In humble confidence and joy, let us pray. We pray for the church, the intention of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our members may be ever faithful to and courageous in preaching the gospel, and that she may be a community of solidarity, fraternity, and welcome. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the bishops of our country, especially Bishop Reka, that their leadership of the Eucharistic revival in our nation will guide many to an authentic encounter with Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us on the cross and in the Holy Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. For those who question their faith, or who have left the church or been hurt by her, that our devotion to the Eucharist will lead them to a deeper experience of Christ as a source of life-giving waters. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the gift of unity, 
that the Holy Eucharist will draw us into deeper union with Jesus, strengthen our love and respect for each other, and bring about everlasting peace in our world. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, afflicted, and addicted, that the Holy Spirit will move them to come to our Eucharistic Lord for healing, strength, and refreshment. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died in the peace of Christ, that they may find in the presence of God light, happiness, and peace. We pray to the Lord. We come to you in hope, O God, knowing that you hear the prayers we offer in faith. May your spirit of wisdom and truth rest upon us always so that we may be prophets of your justice and disciples of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present on the feast day of blessed John Paul II may be for our good, since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as on the festival of St. John Paul II, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Paul II, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the power of the gifts we have received, Lord God, on this feast day of blessed John Paul II, fill us with its effects, both to sustain our mortal life and to gain us the joy of unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. God and Apostolic See, Bishop of this Holy Church of Birmingham, will give the Apostolic Blessing with a plenary indulgence in the name of the Roman Pontiff to all present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and received Holy Communion. Pray to God for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Stephen, and for Holy Mother Church, and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with it. Through the intercession of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.